Yeah, it's really cool. Uh, growing up, I obviously saw my dad in the NHL, and it's kind of always my dream to, to get there as well. And uh, it always felt so far away, you know, as a, just a kid on the, on the outdoor rink thinking, uh, when's my draft year 2024? You know, it seems so uh, so far away, but, but now it's coming pretty quick. So uh, it's, it's uh, been a lot of fun, and, and the week here has been fun too. Talk a lot about bloodlines around the draft year after year. In your case, you know, knowing the career that your dad had, what what would you say your upbringing enabled you to, to learn and and you know prepare yourself for this moment? Where how would you describe that? Yeah, I think I've had a lot of advantages that uh, other other kids haven't. So I think I've been uh, very blessed to to have my dad and and be in kind of a family that's that's so into hockey and. Uh, kind of you know the the main focus in in our house and then uh to, to have my siblings as well they're really into it too so i think we kind of have a a good environment you know boost each other up when i see my brother or sister shooting pucks in the garage uh then you know i'm i'm going after so i think that's kind of uh been been good for for me and, and and them too growing up and then uh learn learn so much from my dad and uh, i think he's a a really good uh mind mind for the game and uh, a great dad as well what's been the process for you to just carve out your own space and, and be your own person and not have constant questions about your family and your dad. Yeah, I think kind of my whole life, obviously, my dad's been there been there uh, uh, with me. And, and I think I've gotten used to, to you know, answering questions and, and uh, hearing about him. But, uh, you know, from, from a, an outside perspective, it might seem like there's uh, more pressure, kind of more expectations, uh, things like that. But I think for me... Uh, my motivation comes from comes from within, and you know, it's I want to succeed because it's what what I want to do and, and my dream. And uh, I'm going to try to to block out the, the the outside noise kind of as much as I can. How did you make your leap this year? I mean, a lot of 70 year old prospects have a big season and improve, but I mean, you really, I mean, your season significantly. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, uh, during my 16 year old year with uh, Seattle, I think I went through a little bit of adversity. You know, uh, it's kind of the first time in, in my life where. I was getting healthy scratch, things like that, and uh, I think I just tried to use it as fuel and motivation uh, as much as I could, and uh, just kind of, yeah, just use it more to to just motivate me and, and kind of put everything I have into it, and uh, try to have a, a big summer, and, and uh, yeah, just kind of going through that adversity, I think it helped me to build a lot of grit, and uh, coming into this season, felt like, uh, you know, it was my draft year, didn't have as good of a 16-year-old year, so felt like I needed a big year, and uh, fortunate I was able to get off to a good start and uh, try to try to prove myself as much as I could. Teach, we talked to your father the other day and he really said nice things about the work Chris Millette's done for you uh, and helping you develop. Maybe just speak about your year in Kelowna and, and, and what that coaching staff has done to help you out. Yeah, they've been they've been awesome for me. Our, you know, our head coach is uh, Millette, like you said, and uh, the whole staff, I think they welcome me in right from, right from my first day and uh, they're really good coaches. They got great minds for the game, great, great ideas for me and the team. Uh, but also, you know, they're, they're great people as well, and uh, I can just tell how much they care about me and, and the other guys as, as uh, individuals and just uh, want us to succeed, and then I think that kind of fuels our, our team success as well. What is, a, what is it like for, for a kid to watch his draft stock go up so dramatically over the course of the season? Is it, do you shut it out, or do you pay, te- do you, do you pay attention to it at all? Or? Yeah, I, I paid a little bit of attention to it. I mean, it was, it was, uh, it was fun, kind of kind of fun to see. You know, at the beginning of the year, like like I was saying earlier, I didn't have the uh, the best 16-year-old year compared to some of my peers. So I knew, you know, in that first September ranking or whatever, I might not be uh, quite as high as I'd like to be, but uh, I just tried to take it kind of one month at a time, use it use it as fuel and, and believe that, you know, when the next one came out, I'd hopefully be a little bit higher. And, uh, yeah, I think, you know, some guys, they, they, they obviously try to block it out a little bit every game. You just uh, try to go play and be your best. But uh, it was kind of fun to, to see those things too. How important, I mean, how mindful were you, like, while you were being scratched um, and, and, and drawing maybe upon the frustration of that? I mean, how much did you maybe draw upon that just to motivate you? Yeah, I mean, it was tough. You never, you never want to be in a... Uh, uh, position where you're going into a game and, and you're uh, you could play and you're not playing, you know. So, uh, yeah, I think those those are, were the were the things that that I, I kind of used as uh, fuel and, and motivation. And uh, like go, in the summer, you know, I wanted to uh, never, hopefully, never have to ex- experience that type of thing again. And and uh, yeah, just try to give myself the, the best chance to uh, 
be in kind of a better position going did forward you, from that. Did you, did you talk it through your coach? What was going on? And I mean, did, did you did you understand what the whole the meaning the meaning of it was? Yeah, I mean, obviously I was a, a young kid in the league, and uh, as a 16 year old, it's it's uh, never easy. And uh, on top of that, you know, we had a really really deep team and uh, a stacked stacked roster, some really good players. And I think I mean that in itself, I think was a really good opportunity for me to be able to show up to the rink with you know Kevin Korczynski, Dylan Gunther, uh, guys who already have an NHL season under their belts and you know still keep in touch with those guys so uh, yeah that, that was uh, that was really cool. How much did the trade just invigorate you, change you I guess? Say it again sorry? How much did the trade I mean just spark you, invigorate you? I guess? Yeah I think uh, it was obviously I got to get, get to go back home so uh, that was a, a nice opportunity for me and you know, there's some advantages that come with that. Uh, you know, I got my, my shooting area and, and my uh, uh, stick handle there that I, that I can use that in, in the evenings. And uh, to be back with, with my dad for another another year working with him and kind of, you know, studying clips and uh, back at home with my brother again was, was uh, nice too. But, yeah, I think, uh, like I said, just, just try to have a, a big summer and uh, come into the season as, as prepared as I could be. Where did you spend most of your time growing up? Were you in Boston? And were yeah, you uh, it's, it's been been a lot of different places. I was uh, in Calgary till I was six. Uh, then my dad got a one year in Boston, so there, there was when I was seven. Uh, then he got three years in Colorado, so eight, nine, ten in, in Colorado. Uh, and after that, he retired, and we went back to Boston. My parents liked the schooling and the hockey combination there, uh, so I moved back there from age 11 to 14 for me. And then after that, me and my brother kind of wanted to go the Western League route like my dad did, so uh, we moved back to, to Canada, made our kind of our summer house in, in Kelowna into our full-time house when I was 15. Uh, and then and then after that is on to, on to junior. Right now your stock is rising to the point that you could be drafted even before Caden Lidstrom and Bertie Captain. How would you compare yourself? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're uh, really good players. I've, I've got to uh, play along alongside them at, at different points. I think uh, Katz is a really, really skilled, really smart, uh, really crafty, and he's in my, my conference there, so we see him... Uh, Few, uh, good, good, good few times a year, and we, uh, uh, you know, our teams, our teams battle it out then. And uh, Lindstrom's obviously really, really good too. Uh, huge, great mix of kind of finesse and physicality. So uh, played with him at uh, Team Team BC tournament in 2021. We won a gold medal together there. So uh, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, they're they're two uh, good buddies of mine, and uh, I think. Yeah, two, two interesting players, and it'll be fun to, to see how they uh, keep going. Is there you like to be drafted before then? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think I'm, I'm a competitive person. I'd like to go as, as high as I can, but uh, at the same time, you know, I just uh, believe that I'll kind of go to whatever the, the, the right spot for me, and, you know, everything will work out. If the teams ask you why, why you should be drafted before then, what would, be, what would your answer be? Huh, yeah, no, uh, uh, I mean, I just try to... I think I have a, a good basis of skills. Obviously, obviously they do too. But uh, I just try to. I think my work ethic and, and just the things that I do on a daily basis. I feel like I'm I'm going to be able to uh, hopefully get a lot better in a lot of areas. So uh, I think you know a couple of years down the road, I think I'll be a hopefully a different player than I am today. But uh, yeah, obviously they're spectacular players too, and um, it'll be fun to watch. If they, they could steal one trait from an active uh, yeah. NHLer, what would it be? Uh, I mean, it'd be hard to uh, to not take McDavid's speed. So. Uh, I'll go with that. How many NHL teams did you meet with this week? Uh, I met with uh, about 20. Is there any questions that stood out to you? Yeah, one of them was uh, Montreal. They, they uh, say, no what, what animal uh, off the ice are you? And I said, uh, I didn't want it. They said, you can't say lion or dog because everyone says that. And I uh, <laughs> wanted to, to not to go with one they probably hadn't heard. So I just kind of on the spot, I was like, I'm a Pegasus, which is a <laughs> myth. It's a mythical creature. It's like a horse with wings. So, uh, and they were like explaining. I was like, oh, yeah, it's hard to explain that. But uh, <laughs> I said, uh, I was like, you know, it's a horse. So I was like, I feel like I can, you know, be uh, uh, so it's kind of sociable and, and friendly and uh, hang out with the other horses. But then I went with uh, when it's time to kind of ascend. You know, I got the wings too. So uh, I'll uh, try to try to try to fly. Did you come you up with that on the spot? Yeah, I, I didn't. I did. I, I did come up with that on the spot. Right. Yeah. You seem to be. I mean, you are engaging. You're friendly. You don't seem to take. You know, you're fine with your, your the connections to your dad. Do you think that being around your dad, that being part of that, seeing part of that, has helped? You seem to embrace being your dad's son and being part of the Aginla family. Yeah. I mean, uh, 
I think there might be a little bit extra attention and, and like I was saying, you know, expectations and, and pressure. But, uh, I mean, for me, having, having my dad and, and having him and, you know, my, my family, it's uh, the pros heavily outweigh the cons. So, uh, yeah, I think it's been good for me to, to you know, be around the game and, uh, as much as I have been. And, and uh, yeah, kind of watching, watching him and, and his interviews over the years, I think that's uh, helped me uh, kind of have a good basis for that sort of thing. How have you reacted to kind of the pretty obvious fervor in Calgary for them to take you and, and how would you react to that possibility happening and, and remaining your, your dad's son in a way? <laughs> yeah I think uh, obviously you know I've had I've had my dad my, my whole life and, and I think I've uh, gotten pretty good at uh, dealing with you know the, the questions and uh, things like that obviously if I was to go to Calgary that would be kind of magnified but uh, yeah I mean I'm, I'd be, be thrilled to, to go anywhere I think it'd be cool to be to play in a uh, Canadian market where you know the fans have as much passion as they do and uh, I mean yeah I'm definitely uh, I think it'd be a, a good spot and uh, good organization. Is there one aspect of your offensive game that you feel would translate particularly well to the NHL and maybe another one where you know that it works now but it might not work at the upper echelon? Uh, yeah I think one of the, the aspects of kind of my offensive game that, that I've worked uh, on over the years would be kind of my shooting and, and uh, goal scoring ability having my dad you know he was a, he was a, a good shooter and goal scorer as well so being able to work with him uh, you know pretty much every day over, over the years has uh, I think helped me a lot in that area and uh, I think that's something that, that I do well and uh, you know just obviously continue to, to improve upon it but I think that's something that hopefully I'll be able to, to do well at the next level and then uh, I mean, obviously to play in the NHL, I, I got to get stronger and uh, more powerful. And uh, as I keep getting older and, and more mature, hopefully uh, that'll come with paired with you know the hours in the weight room. But uh, yeah. What did you take from your time growing up in, in or being in Denver, being around the Avalanche? You were a little older at that point and could probably soak yeah. a little bit more in. So what are some of the players that influenced you while you lived there, or or, or just even off the ice? Yeah, that was uh, it was a lot of fun to be there. Obviously, it's a really nice. Uh, Nice place, nice uh, climate, and uh, good school. Pretty good hockey, and and uh, one of the one of the memories that kind of sticks out for me when I was in uh, Colorado there was uh, one year we had Nathan McKinnon come over for Thanksgiving dinner. So uh, my dad was yeah he's a, in older parts of his career, and uh, I guess kind of took him under his wing a little bit. But but yeah, that was uh, obviously super super cool to see a guy like that. You know. Uh, I think I was still at the, the kitty table then, but, but uh, yeah, that was that was really cool. Was there, were there like mini sticks going on, or like what's like? Did you get to compete with them all during that time? Uh, not really. I was yeah, I was a little bit you know I was uh, kind of a little bit shy, I guess, but <laughs> just hanging around with my brother a little bit more. But uh, yeah, it was it was cool, definitely cool to you know see. Uh, I guess his, even his habits at the dinner table. Did you have a lot of in NHL interaction, NHL players coming over at the house like that? Uh, not a, not a whole lot, but I mean, I you know I got to be in the, the locker room at, at, at times, and I can remember the the first time that I uh, met Sidney Crosby on, underneath the the rink in uh, Pittsburgh, and uh, I can remember playing mini sticks in in the Colorado dressing room with uh, other other uh, players' sons there. Okay. So uh, that was. All those memories are, are I'm super grateful for. Just a couple more. Did McKinney eat dessert? Um, I don't remember, but but uh, if I had to guess, I'd say probably not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was Your hoping coach. you would say he did, and that would be a huge thing. Your coach was saying that you should be going back playing center next season. How do you approach this challenge, and is it the position you really want to play into the NHL? Yeah, I uh, I kind of want to want to go back to center, and like you said, talk talk to my coach about that. And uh, I was a center all the way growing up. Uh, until uh, you know, when I was 16, played a little bit of both, and then uh, this past season played mostly on the wing. But I think it's good to be able to play both and to have that versatility. Uh, but yeah, I'm excited to get to get back in the middle. I think a lot of the the best players in the game. You know, you think of McKinnon, McDavid, Matthews, Crosby. Those guys, they're uh, they're centers, and I think uh, if if if, I, if you can play that position well, it gives you a, a great opportunity to have a really good uh, kind of impact out there. So uh, I'm I, yeah, I'm excited to get back to that spot.